So one time I was traveling to an alpha weekend away and it was like a busy Friday evening and I'd had to rush from work to catch the train and the carriage was absolutely packed with commuters. And it was London, so obviously everyone was avoiding eye contact. And as the train pulled away, you could hear just one person's voice. It was this woman who was talking on her phone and everyone was pretending not to listen, but you could tell that they really were. And she was talking to her boyfriend and the conversation wasn't going very well. In fact, it soon became really clear that she was about to break up with him. And her voice was getting louder and louder and finally she said something that I have never forgotten. She said, if you've been living in London for seven years and the only person you know is me, that is not my problem. And then she hung up. It was one of the saddest things I've ever heard. Even in a big city with so many people around, you could still be lonely. When I'm on the court at the free throw line, five seconds left, game tied, that's when I feel the most alone. New York City is an island of 10 million people where you're completely by yourself every day. These are deep questions. I like them. This is making yeah. me think. Good. Sometimes when I'm just under pressure, with business, with work, sometimes you just feel like you're in it alone. When people are not listening. When uh, I feel like I have to fight just to be in the room. At night, when I have my own thoughts to myself. When I am around a group of people and no one sees my side. When I see uh, on Instagram or Facebook that all of the people except me are having a good time. Sometimes when I'm with the most people in a crowd, because I feel the least understood. When I'm listening to Drake at 4 a.m. In a crowd of a lot of people. In the presence of people who don't care. Everyone's socializing about stuff, and I'm just like, hey. <laughs> There was an article in The Big Issue, a magazine that supports the homeless in the UK, and it said, most people's image of loneliness is of a frail old lady stuck on the 24th floor of an apartment building. The reality is a fashionably dressed guy trying desperately to make conversation with a girl stood next to him in a bar. Being surrounded by so many people only compounds the feeling of isolation. Mother Teresa said, the greatest problem in this world is not starvation. It's loneliness. There is this cosmic loneliness, being in God's world without living in a relationship with him. Someone once described loneliness as a kind of homesickness for God. But the amazing thing is, when we're in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, we're never alone. He's always with us. By way of introduction to the topic of the Holy Spirit, let's look at one verse. In John 15:26. Jesus says, when the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. Jesus says, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit is not a something, he's a someone. He's not a force, he's a person with all the characteristics of personhood. He has an intellect, he thinks, he speaks, he can act, he can guide people. He can be grieved and saddened. He knows, he desires, he has a will, he chooses. And most important of all, he loves. He loves you. So, the Holy Spirit is a person. But what does he do? Jesus describes him as the counselor. The Greek word that Jesus uses is parakletos. That literally means the one called alongside. It's sometimes translated the advocate, the one who comes alongside you in a court. Sometimes the encourager, the one who comes alongside you to encourage. Sometimes the comforter, sometimes the helper. But literally, as I say, it means the one called alongside. So it was the word used, for example, when a little ship got in trouble on the Mediterranean Sea, they would send a big ship to draw alongside it, to lead it to the safety of the harbor. That big ship was called the Paracletos. One of the people who explained this to me most clearly was Father Raniero Cantalamessa. He's the preacher to the papal household. He's been the personal preacher to the last three popes. I used to be professor 
And uh, the doctrines about Jesus were my uh, field of specialization. So I read and wrote a lot about Jesus. But when the Holy Spirit came in a new way in my life, it was in America, in the United States, in New Jersey, then I discovered a new Jesus. It's a, a Jesus who is alive, it's a person. It's not a personality, it's a person. A person is somebody with whom you can speak, to whom you can speak. And Jesus said, if anyone has thirst, let him come to me. So what we need is thirst of the Holy Spirit, not fear of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid. It's an act of faith. The Holy Spirit is called paraclete, which means uh, comforter and advocate. Should we be afraid of our co comforter? I read this story about a 24-year-old guy called Alan Anderson who was in a light aircraft. And there were only two people in the plane, this guy Alan Anderson and the pilot. And as they were flying, the pilot suddenly dropped dead from a heart attack. So here was this guy, no flying experience, on his own in this plane. Well, he managed to get out a Mayday emergency call. And a guy called Robert Legg, who was a flying instructor, responded to the Mayday call and caught up with him 2,000 feet above Penarth, near Cardiff in Wales. And at the same time, there was an amateur radio enthusiast called Howard Day, and he was listening into their conversation, and he recorded everything that they said. The first thing that Anderson said when he saw the instructor coming alongside was, I can see you. To which leg, the instructor said, OK, just listen to my instructions, take the throttle, and pull it slightly until the RPM drops down to about 2,300. Anderson says, well, which is the throttle? So Leg replies, OK, there should be a black lever in the centre of the panel. That's fine, just let the aeroplane fly itself. And Anderson goes, I wish it would. And then Leg says, read the airspeed. The airspeed's 105. OK, well, look out to your right-hand side. You can see me, just relax. And then Anderson says, are we going down? And Leg replies, yeah, yeah, we are shortly. Just bank gently to the right. We're aiming for that wide tarmac airstrip to the right of the red and white lights. Can you see it? Affirmative. OK, we'll reduce the power slightly. What's your airspeed now? Uh, it's about 100. OK, we'll pull very gently onto the control column and then close the throttle and just hold it there. Pull very gently back and hold it there. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold the control column back. That's it, okay, and relax. Now, on the rudder pedals, press the top of the rudder pedals and you'll find the brakes. Press both the rudder pedals together and you'll find the brakes. I can't find the brakes. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. The emergency vehicles are just coming up behind you. Just sit in the aircraft and leave the engine rumbling uh, and now turn the keys to off and then take them out. The engine should stop. Has the engine stopped? Yeah, the keys are out. Just stopping now. Oh, thank God. You're welcome. It's all in a day's work. There might be things going on in your life where you'd love someone to come and help. The Holy Spirit is the one who draws alongside us to be the encourager, the comforter, the counselor. Jesus says about the Holy Spirit, he will testify about me. The role of the Holy Spirit is not to point to himself, but to point to Jesus. His role is to draw alongside you and draw you into a relationship with Jesus. So this weekend, I hope you all have a great time eating together, relaxing, unwinding, going for walks, having fun. But most of all, what I hope is that you will experience the Holy Spirit drawing alongside you and pointing you to Jesus.